نحمد هو نصلي على رسوله الكريم أما بعد قال الله تعالى في شان حبيبه إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى ال سيدنا محمد اصحابي وبارك وسلم السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته ويلكم تو ذا بروجرام مفتاح القران بريزنتد باي اي تي في اند اوف كورس وي كونتينيو وذ سوره البقره اند توداي وي ار غوين تو كونتينيو وذ فيرس نمبر 266 اند از اي يوزلي دو وي begin our verses by reciting bismillahir rahmanir rahim auzu billahi minash shaitanir rajim i seek refuge in allah from satan the accursed bismillahir rahmanir rahim i begin in the name of allah the beneficent the merciful and in our last lesson what we actually did was we did various verses and dealing with giving charity and if you give charity you do not insult or you do not reproach or you do not cause injury and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave examples of one who gives charity to show off and another person who gives charity just for the pleasure of allah and also for his own inner contentment and allah give you a further example of a person who in his youth he does something and when he gets old and he is helpless just see the condition here ayawaddu ahadukum أن تكون له جنة من نخيل وأعناب. Let's take it word by word. أ يود أحدكم أن تكون له جنة من نخيل وأعناب. So Allah is telling us. أ is obviously as a question mark. You know in Arabic in the Quran there is no question mark. That when a word begins with أ or هل and we know that like interrogative word like man ma etc we know it's a question and like alam tara a anta faalta a means beginning of a question ya waddu wadda ya waddu wadda means to wish to love like al wadud the one who loves wish for or desire so we will just use the word wish so i use like allah is talking about a person who gives charity but look at him allah gives you what type of a person ya waddu ya waddu of course is he he wishes he wishes right ahadukum any of you in other word allah is telling is one who wishes from among you and that takuna there should be there should be lahu for him now here is a young man he he is a kind of a person who does not give charity he is a miser now he is thinking about his future he says do you wish of a person who should have for him jannatun a garden right and in that mean nakhilin of date palm you know that is and grapes i would do ahadukum an takuna lahu jannatun Does any one of you wish that there should be a garden for him min nakhilin wa anabin of date palm and grapes now you see Allah is talking to a person who is young he says you give charity and what happens in a in a final analysis so here is a young man and Allah is giving you as a parable do you wish that anybody in his youth should have a garden full of date palm and grapes and all the other plantations etc tajri min tahti al-anhar lahu fiha min kulli thamarat so let us take it word by here tajri min tahti al-anhar lahu fiha min kulli thamarat tajri now you know if you have a garden and you know what is the biggest problem in a garden is water you can have everything but minus water your garden is useless or your your 
your cultivation will not grow so here allah says you have you are wishing if one wishes for for a garden full of plantation tajri flowing min tahtiha beneath it you see al anhar the rivers you know nahrun is singular right anharun is plural but no there are two ways of writing anharun anharun and anharun both are plural but you notice here we have an alif to make you anharun and here we have the short vowel and it both means the same thing both means the same thing so here allah is talking about someone who wishes for a garden with all this a rivers lahu for him fiha in it min of kulli min all kinds of what of the fruit you see so now tajri min tahti al anharu rivers flowing beneath it in it he has all kinds of fruit so here is a person allah is saying do you wish to be that person right that in his youth he has this garden full of rivers flowing and everything fruit and all the produce wa asabahu al kibaru wa lahu zuriyatun du'afahu fa asabaha isarun fihi narun fahtaraqat so what happens let's see to him the young man wa asabahu al kibaru you see wa lahu zuriyatun du'afahu fa asabaha ihsarun fihi narun fahtaraqat now what happens in his old age wa end or but because we giving you something in a contrast asabahu you see asaba befalls you see rain falls you also called it asaba but asaba means to fall what falls on him al kibaru what is al da kibar is old age like for instance allah subhanahu wa taala talks about in in surah bani israil imma yablughanna indaka al kibar if your parents reach kibar means old age so from the word kabir you can see kabar kibar akbar all are related to the same rule at kibar so now that he reaches old age wa and lahu for him that he has for him means he has zurriyatun a progeny he has children and grandchildren but duafa weak weak means they are not healthy they are not, not tough to work in the farm you see now he was in his youth he enjoyed life but in his old age now he's got family he's got children grandchildren but they are youth i mean they are not put out they were not what you call brought up in such a way that they could work in a tough conditions in the farm for asabaha then befalls it what is asabaha asabaha meaning feminine yeah befalls the garden the plantation the big farm the lovely things he had everything what befalls him ihsarun a fiery whirlwind now you know whirlwind we read every time there's a fire on the mountain and a fire here and a fire there a fiery whirlwind comes now fihi in it narun is a furnace right is a furnace fahtaraqat then it is consumed by the fire that is his garden his big plantation and all his date palm and all his grapes and all his produce whatever was there is consumed by the fire wa asabahu al kibar but this old man what this young man he had that enjoyed life but now old age befalls him while he has a weak and 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 you know what you call family children or grandchildren who are not tough for the farm work fa asabaha ihsarun fihi narun fahtaraqa then a fiery whirlwind befalls it now we are used to those mountain fires and all that in it is a furnace then it is consumed by the fire that the entire farm and imagine now in his young age the man enjoyed life and allah is giving you a parable in his old age he is hit two ways first his family is too weak and the second the fire consuming kadhalika yubayyinu Allahu lakum al-ayati la'allakum tatafakkarun ait kadhalika let's take it word by word kadhalika yubayyinu Allahu lakum al-ayati la'allakum tatafakkaruna kadhalika das 
That is, Allah is giving you this parable again of a young man. What happens to him in his old age? He suffers in two ways. First of all, his family is weak. They cannot work the farm. And secondly, the fiery furnace comes and destroys everything. So Allah says, thus, you buy, you know, he makes clear that Allah is he, meaning he is referred to as Allah. And you can see the capital letter, Allah, who makes clear Allah, we can see the subject of the sentence there. Allah make clear, lakum for you, O believers, Allah is making clear for you. Al-ayati, al of course, is the ayat. You notice the moment you put that alif or the short alif there, it means plural. Ayah is singular. Ayat is plural. It's a feminine. You can see plural because of long and the long ta and the alif. Al-ayat, the signs, Allah is giving you that the signs, He's giving you the parables, etc., etc. La'allakum, so that you may. La'allah, of course. La'allah, la'allih, so that I. La'allaka, so that you may. La'allahu, so that he may. La'allahum, so that they may. But la'allakum, so that you, you may. Tatafakkaruna, you see. Tafakkara ya tafakkaru. You see, tafakkara is a fifth form verse. It's a fifth form. Tafa'ala ya tafa'alu. It means to reflect, to go into deep contemplation. Allah is talking. So that, you see, tafakkara ya tafakkaru. You turn the ya into a ta. It means you. And wow, noon makes it plural. So you, many of you, that is plural, may reflect. So Allah says here, yeah, and thus, by giving you so many examples, Allah gave you examples in the previous lesson. We discussed about a rock, shiny rock. There is dust and the wind comes or the rain comes, nothing will grow. But a lovely garden where you give charity out of love for Allah and for his own contentment. And then he gave you example of the young man in his youth. He enjoys the farm, the water is flowing, everything. In his old age, he suffers. So Allah says, thus, Allah makes clear for you the signs, لَأَلَّكُمْ تَتَفَكَّرُونَ So that you may reflect. You may reflect what can happen in your old age. There's no guarantee for anything. You see? So let's take the next verse. يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا Right. يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا We have done this so many times. يَا أَيُّهَا What is يَا أَيُّهَا is vocative. When you address someone. Now you address somebody without the al, you just use ya. Ya walad, ya Muhammad, ya Nabi, ya Musa, ya Isa. You see, but the moment the word is followed by an al, like ya, I, you cannot say yal. How would you pronounce this? Yal. You see, so you say ya ayyuha, you put that ya. And remember, this ya is the ya of the vocative. Now the other O-H. Now when we write that O-H, now that O-H with an exclamation mark. Now what does that mean? Oh, somebody hit you or somebody, you know, you you, you, are, you know, you have a pain and you shout out, oh, that is the O of exclamation. And that is not what this O means. This O is the vocative O, only O, not O-H. Right. Ya ayyuha alladhina, those who, relative pronoun, Amanu, they have believed. Now you find that many a time if you open some translation, they will tell you, oh, those who believe. Oh, those who believe. But as I told you, I'm doing a literal translation. So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, Ya ayyuhal lazina amanu, oh, those who have believed. And inshallah, we'll have a short break. And after the short break, we shall continue. Just to remind you, you're watching ITV and the program, of course, is... مفتاح القرآن كي تو ذا قرآن إنا أنزلناه قرآنا عربيا لعلكم تعقلون إنا أنزلناه قرآنا عربيا لعلكم تعقلون أنفقوا من طيبات ما كسبتم ومما أخرجنا لكم من الأرض. 
Now the question of the charity continues. Now after addressing the believers, Ya ayyuhal lazina amanu, O those who have believed, Allah says, Anfiqu min tayyibati ma kasabtum. Let's take it word by word. Anfiqu min tayyibati ma kasabtum wa mimma akhrajna lakum min al-ardi. Right, here Allah is talking again about charity. Now, anfiqu, anfaqa, he spent. Junfiqu, he is spending. Now, the rule is how to form the, the, the imperative, the command. You take that ya out and you put this alif. You put that alif, so you say anfiq, wow alif becomes. Plural anfiqu means spend. Spend what? In charity, that is what it means. doesn't mean to say go now to the mall or some shopping center and spend. This anfiqu actually refers to spending in the cause of Allah, fi sabiulillah, in charity. So Allah says anfiqu min of, right, min of tayyibati, the wholesome things. Now you see min is a preposition. Now if you look tayyibah, it tayyibah with a round ta is singular. It is singular. But tayyibat is a feminine plural. The alif with a, with a long ta, it means it is, it is the feminine plural and it is, of course, in what case is it? Is it in a preposition? Because of the preposition, it is in the accusative case. So the wholesome things, you see, is very, very important. Allah tells you that you must spend tayyibati ma what? Or you can even say whatever. Or that what? Kasabtum. You see, kasaba. Kasaba means to earn. He earned. Kasaba, he earned. Kasabtum, you earned. Why you? Why Allah is talking about you? Because he's addressing, Ya ayyuhal lazina amanu. Oh, you have believed. Allah is speaking to you. So therefore Allah is saying, Kasabtum, you have earned. You see, kasaba. It's a very important verb in, in, in Islamic, Quranic, this thing. Means you earn, right? And then like for instance, well, uh, Allah is not going to look at what your hearts, your thoughtlessness. Allah is going to say what your hearts have earned. You see, so kasabtum wa mimma. Now mimma we know is made of min plus ma of, of course is min ma of that what or of whatever. Akhrajna. Now I want you to notice this verb. You see the root, the three letters here, kharaja. Kharaja means to go out. Kharaja means to go out. But if I put it in form four, you see this is on form four. Akhraja. Af'ala yuf'ilu. Akhraja yukhriju. Akhrajna. Akhraja means I cause you to go out. If I cause you to go out, what I'm doing? I'm removing you. Right. I'm causing you to exit or I am producing. Can you see how we change that from one, from one form to another form? It has a slight difference in the meaning. This is the beauty of the Arabic language. Kharaja, he went out. Akhraja, he caused someone else to go out or he removed, he expelled or he produced. Akhrajna, akhraja, he produced. Akhrajna, na of course is we produce. Lakum for you, min from Al Ardi, of course, min is a preposition. Al Ardi is in the genitive cave from the earth. So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks to the believers. Ya ayyuhal lazina amun, O you have believed. Anfiqu min tayyibati ma kasabtum. Spend of the wholesome things. In other words, you give in charity, don't give all your nonsense things that you want to throw away. As they say, you put your hand so deep in the pocket, it must hurt. You give good things when you give in charity. This is what Allah, min tayyibati ma kasabtum, what you have earned yourself. Wa mimma akhrajna lakum min al ardi And what we, that is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has produced for you from the earth. What, what has Allah produced for us from the earth? All the gold, all the diamond, all the lovely fruit, all the things, whatever comes. Whether it is furniture, it comes from the earth, the wood comes from the earth. The good clothing comes from the earth. Everything comes from the earth. You follow. So Allah says, give of the good things. Tayyibat. You see, 
ولا تيمموا الخبيث منه تنفقون ولستم باخذه الا ان تغمدوا فيه ولا تيمموا الخبيث منه تنفقون ولستم باخذه الا ان تغمدوا فيه and then allah says what wa end la not tayammamu what is tayammamu you know when you when you make that tayammum it is also called you know the dust wuzu the dust also called tayammu fa tayammamu but here tayammum means do not seek do not look for do not look for al khabitha that is the evil khabis means evil but it also means worthless al khabis means worthless allah says you on the other side you must give tayyibat the wholesome things the good things when you give in charity but allah says do not give the evil thing meaning the things that are useless torn and tattered you want to throw away and you want to show off that you want to give it as charity you see min who from it tunfiquna you spend you give in charity you spend in charity what the al khabis the useless things the worthless things min hu tunfiquna wa while right lastum you are not you yourself be akhizi accepting it you yourself will not accept it if somebody gives it to you right illa accept and that tuhmidu you connive you just in a very what you call harsh way let like you say you you swallow the bitter pill if somebody gives you an old shirt or an old shoe pair of shoes or something like that you yourself will not take it fihi at it so allah says wala tayammamul khabisa min hutun fiquna and do not seek the evil the worthless things that are you want to give it doesn't mean you say you have an old jersey you can't give that away but the recommendation allah says that give the tayyibat give the good things that the person you are giving to will appreciate you must give until it hurts in other word you see and then allah says ye wa lastum bi akhizi illa an tuhmidu fi while you yourselves you see you are not going to do not accept it you are not going to use an old tattered shirt or an old tattered shoe you want to throw it in a refuse bin but somebody comes you say take this you see that allah is not happy with that allah says give tayyibat give of the nice good things that you have wa alamu anna allah ghaniyun hamid how beautiful is this verse wa an i'lamu anna allah ghaniyun hamid wa but you see it is a sentence in contrast to we don't say and we say but i'lamu what is alima that word ilm no no or be aware i'lamu no or be aware anna that now we know that anything that come with the two murun tasdid what happens to it it must be followed by the noun in the accusative case you cannot say anna lahu or anna lahi you have to follow the noun that follows it must be in the object or accusative case so because of anna we say anna laha ghaniyun self sufficient allah is ghani allah is rich you see now that is actually a nominal sentence when you talk about the tanwin it becomes a nominal sentence hamidun praiseworthy now notice now here what allah is saying do not give all your khabis your worthless things in charity to get rid of that but give your tayyibat and allah is warning you look at just examine the attributes he is using here wa alamu and no and be aware that allah is ghani allah is not in need of all your all your rotten things in other words all your your worthless thing that you want to give in his name and you say you're going to get a reward for it but be aware that allah is self sufficient ghani allah is rich ghani means rich self sufficient and hamid praiseworthy so this is a warning to all those people who want to instead of putting those things in the refuse bin you want to give it to somebody 
that comes through your door or somebody comes asking, you see, and you think you are doing him a favor in a door. In other words, you are creating a problem for him to carry it into the refuse bin. This is what Allah is telling. So let us continue. What happens to those people who think, you know, you think you give somebody your hundred rand, hundred rand, you are going to be poor by hundred rand. You see, so let us see what Allah is talking about. Such people, ash-shaytanu ya'idukum al-faqra wa ya'murukum bil-fahshai. You see, ash-shaytanu ya'idukum al-faqra wa ya'murukum bil-fahshai. You see, the negative force, ash-shaytan, shaytan, the negative force. What the shaytan will tell you, the negative force. What he'll do? Ya'idukum. He will, you see that word, wa'ada ya'idu has two meanings. See, wa'ada, wa'ada karo means you must promise. You must promise. But another meaning of that word is threaten. And we find that most of the scholars, they prefer when it comes to shaitan, they prefer to use the translation of threaten. You can even say promise if you want to. You can even say shaitan threatens he threatens you or he promises you. You see, wa'ada ya'idu. Ya is, what is ya? He. Who is that he? Ash-shaytanu is a subject of the sentence. Can you see? Shaitan is a subject because you ask the question who before the verb. You ask the question who? What are you getting? Who threatens you? Shaitan. You see the subject. The sign of the subject is the so you say shaitan threatens you and as I told you, you can even say promises. You see, shaitan threatens you al-faqra. You see that al is that because it's in the accusative, you use it with, with what? Faqra, the poverty. Now shaitan comes your negative thought. You know you give hundred ren away, you'll be hundred ren poorer. You give a thousand ren away. You'll be a thousand rand poorer. This shaitan puts all those ideas into you. Whispers, you see. Yuasfi Sufi Suduri Nas. One who whispers all this evil thought. Wa and Ya'murukum. He enjoins you. He orders you. You see, Amara Ya'muru. This is a simple, try little verb. Amara Ya'muru. Like Nasara Yansuru. Amara, he ordered. Ya'muru. You see that Ya means he orders, he enjoins, he commands, whatever you want to, ya muru. Who is that ya? Shaitan again is a subject of the sentence. And he enjoins you, he orders you, he commands you. You see, this ya muru means to enjoin, to command. Bil fahshai wud. You see, b is wud, al is da, fahsha. What is fahsha? Indecency or indecent acts. Indecent acts. So Allah says, now you see, as far as charity is concerned, what will shaitan tell you? As shaitanu ya'idikumul faqra wa ya'murukum bil fahshai. The Satan threatens you, or you can even use promises you with the poverty. You give your charity away, you're going to be so many thousands or so many. You give your loaf of bread away, who? Oh, you're going to be poverty stricken. Where are you going to have another loaf of bread from? And waya murukum bil fahshai, and he also commands you and he enjoins you with the indecency. How he does that? How he does that? By refusing people charity, it's an indecent act. Then he tells you, no, take that money, rather go and enjoy yourself, go to some gambling school and use it, things like that, to do wrong things, immoral things. You see, this is what shaitan will order you. But Wallahu ya'idukumul al maghfiratu minhu wa fadla wallahu wasi'un alim wa allahu ya'idukum maghfiratam minhu wa fadlan wa allahu wasi'un alim now look at what allah is going to do for you wa but now as i told you it's a thought in opposite the moment the sentence or the idea comes the opposite to what you have discussed, we do not try translate the war as and, but it is better and preferred to translate that war as but. Wa but Allahu Allah ya'idukum. You see ya'ida again. 
Now, Ya is He. Now, Allah will not threaten you, but what Allah, as I told you, this Wa'ada, Ya'idu, has two meanings. One, it threatens, the other one is also promises. Right, Ya'idu kum, He promises you. Who promises you? There is a subject of the sentence, Allah. Right, but Allah promises you maghfiratan, forgiveness. Allah promises you forgiveness. Why? You give charity. Every time you give charity, you're wiping your sins. Do you know that? Every time you give charity, that is one way of wiping minhu from him. Wa and fadlan, and a bounty. Allah promises you forgiveness and a bounty because it is said that al hasanatu use ibn sayyat good deeds remove and cancel away all your evil deeds you see wa and wallahu and allah is wasiun all embracing allah is all embracing that is a nominal sentence which means is and he is alim also allah is knowledgeable now look at this sentence here wallahu ya'idukum maghfiratan minhu and, but Allah promises you forgiveness from him. As you give charity, you have a big heart, you do it for the sake of the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and for your own inner satisfaction, as Allah said earlier in the verses we did, and what Allah, that because you have been doing that without causing injury, without reminding the person and insults and all, Allah is going to promise you what? Forgiveness from him and a bounty. The more you give, the more you're going to grow. Do you realize that? Examine people who give and examine the miser who doesn't give. You'll find the miser, he may have some bank balance, but in reality, he's not that happy person as one who gives. So Allah gives him bounty. But look at that. Wallahu wasi'un alim. Again, look at the, the sifat that Allah uses. That Allah is going to give you in charity. You give in charity, Allah is going to give you what? He's going to give you forgiveness, plus he's going to give you a bounty. So who's going to do that? A person who is all-embracing. Allah is all-embracing. You see, the sifat is used very, very selectively. It is picked with reference to what Allah has discussed in that particular sentence. So here you say, Allah is all-embracing and he is knowing. Why should he know? Because he knows who's giving the charity in a proper way for the pleasure of his pleasure and for his own inner satisfaction without showing off ria an nas. You see, now we continue. You til hikmata man yashaw. You ti al hikmata man yashaw. You ti he grants. You see, you is ata you ti. You see this verb. His ata yuti, the ya becomes he, so he grants or he gives. You see, he gives or he grants. What does he give? He gives al hikmata. You notice here, Allah gives that wisdom. Well, hikmata, man to whomever. Right, yasha'u, sha'a yasha'u. You notice that ya is means he, so it means yu'til hikmata man yasha'u. He grants the wisdom. You see, al hikmah. It's not wisdom, it is the wisdom to whomever he desires. So in other words, a person who's acting in the right way, he does so because of wisdom. And of course, we'll have a short break. And after the short break, we shall continue, inshallah. And just to remind you, you are watching ITV and the program is Miftah al-Quran, Key to the Quran. <laughs> Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome back to the program Miftahul Quran and of course as I just told you before the break you have tuned into ITV and we continue with Surah Al-Baqarah and the verse we are doing Bismillah Rahman Rahim Yu'til Hikmata Man Yashaw Allah says after discussing who gives charity how you give charity and the benefits and so on 
Allah says he grants the wisdom and notice it is not just wisdom but the wisdom to whomever he desired وَمَنْ يُؤْتَ الْحِكْمَةَ فَقَدْ أُوْتِيَ خَيْرًا كَثِيرًا So let us take this وَمَنْ يُؤْتَ الْحِكْمَةَ فَقَدْ أُوْتِيَ خَيْرًا كَثِيرًا wa end man one to whom one to whom ever or whomsoever you can choose whom whoever whomsoever yuta he is granted you see this is actually a passive voice he is granted it is a voice passive verb in other word who is granted al hikmata al of course is the hikma is wisdom and you notice wisdom is in a feminine gender whoever is granted wisdom faqad then verily fa of course is then qad is verily utiya you know again you find it is in a passive voice again utiya he has been granted you know this that passive voice khairan right khairan means good khairan means good or excellence you see khairan kathiran kathiran is much kathiran much So let us see the the concord here. Khairan is what is masculine, kathiran is masculine. You notice it is in the accusative case and kathiran is also in the accusative case. Both are singular, both are masculine, both are accusative, much good or you can say abundant good. Abundant goodness as you like, but we make it simple, much good. So here Allah says waman uti waman yu'ta al-hikmata and the one to whom the wisdom is granted faqad uti khairan kathira then verily he has been granted much good now why because you are behaving in the right way you giving your charity in a proper way you know remember we continue talking about charity wama yadhakkaru illa ulul albab wa ma yadhakkaru illa ulu al albabi wa is of course as i told you when you have sentences and idea in contrast we do not translate as wa we say ba but but ma not yadhakkaru shall remember you see zakara you know that zikr when you zikr you remembrance of allah zikrullah notice the same root letter but this is a verb zakara you zakiru means to remember zakkara he remembered ya yeah, right ya ya zakkaru shall remember you see shall remember it illa except ulu ulu means people or the persons or sometimes you find men but i'm very scared of the you know feminine uh, people who come and say why do you say men only so i say right let's leave it to persons the persons al albabi al of course is the and that kasra means of of the understanding right who will remember whatever he see wa ma yadhakkaru illa ulul albab but shall remember it not i'm translating it literally and we can say none shall remember it but the actual word is but shall remember it not except the persons of the understanding shall remember what that allah will give you hikmah and the greatest thing in life is wisdom and understanding of things like that so let us proceed to the next verse wa ma anfaqtum min nafqatin aw nazartum min nazrin wa and ma whatever or what anfaqtum you see now again that this is very important verb you should have known it by now anfaqa yunfiqu It's a fourth form verb. Anfaqa yunfiqu infaqun. Anfaqa means you spend anfaqtum. Right? Mean of nafaqa. Nafaqa means a charity. Even you give maintenance to your wife. Right? The Arabic word is nafaqa. Also something you give. You do not want to return. You give with your well wishing. So a charity. Aw or nafaqa. nazartum you take a vow now how do you take a vow you give charity or you take a vow you take a vow you say you know what one day when i have money i will give you a thousand rand or one day when i have money i'm going to support this uh, child's welfare society 
One day if I have a money, I'm going to give some money to the masjid or the madrasa. You see, you have taken a vow. This is the meaning of nazar too. You see, min nazarin a vow. You have taken a vow of a vow. وَمَا أَنْفَقْتُمْ مِنْ نَفَقَتِينَ And whatever you spend of a charity, أَوْ نَزَرْتُمْ Or you take a vow to say, one day I will do this. فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ يَعْلَمُ وَلِذَّالِي مِنَا مِنْ أَنْصَارِ You see? And then what it says, فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ يَعْلَمُ Right? وَمَا لِذَّالِي مِنَا مِنْ أَنْصَارِ Right? It's supposed to be مَايَ وَمَا لِلظَّالِمِينَ مِنْ أَنْصَارِ Right? So you say, فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ يَعْلَمُ فَإِنَّ اللَّهُ يَعْلَمُ وَمَا لِلظَّالِمِينَ مِنْ أَنْصَارِ So let us take word by yet. فَإِنَّ Then surely. فَ of course is then. إِنَّ is surely. Then surely Allah. Why is Allah? Because of the noon with the tajdeed. Allah goes in the accusative case. So you notice that. فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ يَعْلَمُهُ يَعْلَمُهُ يَعْلَمُ عَلِمَا يَعْلَمُ What is يَعْلَمُ? يَعْلَمُ He knows. يَعْلَمُ He knows who is it. So in other words, whatever you do, you give in charity, whether you make a vow to say, one day when I come off means I'm going to do this and do that, Allah knows it. Wa and ma, there is not. Wa ma and there is not. Li dhali mina. For the, li is to, al is da. You notice, li, when you have li and you join it to al, what happens? Li al becomes Lil. You notice? Lil. Li, it is Li plus Al. Li zalimina. For the unjust. Min. Any. Ansar. What is Ansar? From Nasir. One who helps. Ansar help us. So you see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Says, Fa inna Allah ya'lamu. Then surely Allah knows it. So whatever you do in charity. Whether you give in charity. Your good paye bad good things, right? Or you have made a nazar. Nazar means a vow. Nazar doesn't mean to say some kind of a bad eye that we use in the Indo Pak understanding. Nazar means a vow. You make a vow that one day when I come right to this and that, I'm going to have this cause and that cause. So Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala says, "Fa inna Allah ya alamu." So then surely Allah knows everything. وَلِلظَّالِمِينَ مِنْ أَنْصَارِ وَمَا لِلظَّالِمِينَ Sorry, I see the same thing here actually supposed to be وَمَا Right, وَمَا لِلظَّالِمِينَ As we have got here, وَمَا مَا is very very important وَمَا لِلظَّالِمِينَ وَمَا لِلظَّالِمِينَ And there is not Right, مَا means not And there is not For the unjust What is ظَالِم? Unjust, wrongdoers evil doers etc they do not have help us right and then allah says in tubdu sadaqati fa inna fa ni imma hiya in tubdu as sadaqati fa ni imma hiya in if tubdu means if you disclose you publish that thing to say i gave uh, the welfare society 500 rand you put it in a newspaper or you let the public know or you go and help some cause, or you go to the masjid, madrasa, or to the orphanage, or somewhere you give. Allah says, you disclose it. You disclose the charities. Right? If you disclose the charities, fani imma, then it is, it is well. Here. Here, fani imma, meaning it is okay. In tubdu sadaqati fani imma, here. If you disclose the charities, then it is well. But you do not disclose it in such a way that you belittle somebody and you lose somebody's dignity you see that man there he's out of job i'm helping him every month to pay his rent now you immediately belittle him you see but you disclose in such a way to say that i gave 500 i'm expecting my friends to beat me you see allah says first tabiqu bil khairat you raise with one another on giving charity that is a different thing but you do not disclose to injure to undermine to reproach and to disgrace somebody or belittle somebody. That is not what Allah means here. 
that if you disclose the charities, then it is well. وَإِن تُخْفُوهَا وَتُؤْتُوهَا الْفُقَرَى فَهُوَ خَيْرٌ لَكُمْ وَإِن تُخْفُوهَا وَتُؤْتُوهَا الْفُقَرَى فَهُوَ خَيْرٌ لَكُمْ But, you see, as I told you that wa, we are going to translate as but because it is an opposite thought. You understand why you change to but. But, in, if, tukhfuha, you conceal them. Tu is you. You see, khifya, what is khifya means? Silent, without a noise. Tukhfu means to conceal, to hide. Ha means, what is ha? Why is a feminine? Because sadaqa is feminine. You see, Allah is referred to them as sadaqat, which is feminine. So if you conceal them, meaning you give it, like they say, you give in one hand, or the other hand does not know. Wa en tu tu ha. You give them. Ta is you. You give. Ha is means them. Feminine again, because sadaqat is feminine. The pronoun refers to sadaqat. It is used in a feminine form. Do you notice that? And if you give them, Al-Fuqara, give to whom? Al-Fuqara, you see. That is the accusative case. Fuqara is a plural of faqir. Faqir means a poor person. Fuqara is a plural of faqir. To the poor. If you give it to the poor, what happens? Fahuwa. Then it is khairun, is, is better. You see, khair means better. It is better. Lakum for you. وَإِن تُخْفُوهَا وَتُؤْتُوهَا الْفُقَرَاءَ فَهُوَ خَيْرُ لَكُمْ But if you conceal them, that is your charity, you do not make a show of it, unless you want to do it in a competitive way, that is a different thing. But you do not go and give and, and start letting the whole world know that you have given this poor man something, and you give them to the poor, then it is better for you. You see, وَيُكَفِّرُ أَنْكُمْ مِنْ سَيِّئَاتِكُمْ wa yukaffiru ankum min sayyi'atikum wa and kaffara yukaffiru is a what it is it is form number two like qaddara yukaddiru form number two it is like kaffara yukaffiru means to expiate expiate or to remove to remove to wipe out like you wipe out a sin you expiate you see you see kaffara comes from there Say, guna ka kafara karo. You see, you, you do something to wipe out your sin. You see, we use a kafara. So all these are from the same root letter. So you, you kafiru, you, it will expiate. Ankum from you. Min part of. Remember this word, min partitive. It is min partitive. It doesn't mean it's all part of sayyatikum, your evil deeds. Your evil deeds. Sayyah. Sayyat is a feminine plural. It is used here as a feminine plural showing. And then Allah says, Wa yukaffiru ankum min sayyatikum. And it will expiate, meaning it will remove and wipe out from you part, please remember, part of your evil deeds. There are certain major deeds, like murder, I suppose, or something like that, will not be wiped out by just giving some charity. That's another point. But here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, that if you, in a very silent way, you give your charity, Allah will help you and wipe your sins. Wallahu bima ta'maluna khabir. Wa Allah bima ta'maluna khabir. Wa end. Allahu, Allah is. Allah, Allah is what? Bima, B is of. You can say whatever, you can say that what, you can say what. Right, of that what, or whatever, ta'maluna, you see that word amala, amala means your deeds, you do. Amala ya'malu, ta'malu means you do, you see that ta means you, ta'malu you do. Khabirun is informed, is acquainted, is khabardar, is khabardar, meaning well informed, you see. So, wallahu bima ta'maluna khabir, and Allah is acquainted, he is informed, of that what you do. So you see, uh, respected viewers, we have come to the end of our discussion here, but let us just recap some of the things that we have learned in this lesson number 74. We learned 
that when you give in 73 and 74, that the etiquette of giving the charity, how you must give the charity, give the charity without causing insult, without reminding people that, hey, I did this and I did that. And then Allah says, you must anfiku min tayyubat, you must give things that are wholesome, nice things. Do not give all your, your waste things in your house, instead of putting them in the waste bin, you give it to them. And then also Allah says that when you give the charity, you must give it in such a way one, that if you hide, if you conceal it, if you conceal the charity and you give it to the poor, right? Now imagine here is a person who is a needy person. He may be a father, he may be a breadwinner, he may be a, she may be a mother. Now it is her dignity that when she takes that loaf of bread home, she mustn't be come there with a complex to her children that you know it's been announced in the radio that I got a loaf of bread from so and so. How embarrassing it will be. So you give the person the charity, Allah says you give to the fuqara, right? Khairul lakum, it is better for you. Do not go and brag about it. Do not show off. But as I told you, in a certain case, for instance, where you are building a mosque or you're building a something and you want to announce, you say, you know what? I have given 500 rand. I challenge all my friends to give, to beat me. That is a different thing because Allah says in the Quran, wastabiku bil khairat. You must compete one with one another in, in the race one another in the doing of good words. And of course, that was really, really interesting. The two lessons that we have done about charity, how to give charity, the etiquettes of charity and what to give in charity and how to give it. And with these few words, we have come to the end of this lesson number 74. Shukran for watching. And before I take leave, I must thank the control room here for giving me this assistance here. And uh, until next time, Abdul Samad Abdul Qadr will bid you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alif Lam Ra Tilka Ayatul Kitab Al Mubin Inna Anzalna Hu Quran Al Arabi Al Alakum Taqilun Madhu